and welcome to the second part of our orchestral composition breakdown. Um, in the first video, we already created the whole string arrangement starting from the piano track. And in this video, we will take care of the woodwinds, the brass and also the percussion. So for the beginning, let's listen to the string section and the piano one more time. That was the end of our first video. Okay, and now we will directly jump into the woodwinds and for the demonstration it's better to only have appassionata and also not the piano. And I will show you step by step um, what instruments I added in the way that I added them. Um, I started at first with the two flutes legato patch from the Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds and as you can see I also used the medium stereo mix from the professionals version and if we listen to them alone it they sound like this and together with the strings So they just give that flute character that I really like on top of the strings and they are playing the exact same melody as the first violins. You can see exactly the same, just a little bit different modulation. I would recommend to always um, record it uh, from, for each track um, by itself. Um, the next step I did, I added the oboes and the oboes also use the legato patch, two oboes, also the medium mix, Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds and they are playing the same as the second violins. Sorry, here they are on its own. And together with the strings and the flutes. There was a hanging note. So you can hear the oboes very gently in the arrangement but they add that beautiful color and support the second violins. The solo oboe um, I also used the medium stereo mix uh, legato from the woodwinds and it sounds like this on its own.
Okay, I thought uh, they were playing the same melody like the violas, but they are not. So let's just have a listen, uh, have a look, sorry. Okay, so that means the oboes. Okay, that's interesting. With the oboes I played kind of like a counter melody um, with the two oboes. So if you, they are pretty near. Um, and if we listen to both of them together, the two oboes and the oboe solo oboe. And in this um, passage, I didn't want them to play, so I, st I, I uh, stopped playing them and they just come back in there at bar six. But all together sounds like this. So this is also pretty interesting. This is only the woodwinds on its own. And I already watched hundreds of videos from other composers. Um, one really important thing is that the woodwinds on its own always sound beautiful. So also listen to them solo, just the woodwind section if you are done with this completely. And if it is harmonic and the volume of the different instrument matches, that's great, and then you can adjust it to the string section and add it to them. The next instrument that I added is the solo clarinet. I added two clarinets. You can see it's two times the clarinet solo legato patch, also medium mix. And they are playing slightly in a different range, but almost the same. So this is pretty much the viola range. Let's compare it. Look at the viola. Yes, they are playing around the viola. And you can hear they give a completely different note to the woodwinds. Okay, perfect. Um, and now we are already getting into the lower registers of the woodwinds, um, the bassoon. Let's see what patch I used here. The solo bassoon legato patch medium mix again. And it plays like this. This could be in the same range as the celli, as you can see. If we compare it, so it's pretty much like building a puzzle, yeah? <laughs> you um, just have to find the range where the instrument has its strength and where it uh, usually plays. And then I also added a second bassoon. And this is a long articulation. This is not the legato patch, this is the long articulation because it sounds a little bit different and I wanted to have this tone here as well. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, just the two bassoons. Okay, so you get the idea uh, together with the two clarinets. It gets brighter and brighter and fuller and fuller, so it sounds really rich um, as I wanted it to sound. Yes, with the oboes and the flutes on top, all together until here. Okay, two more woodwinds left. Um, let's see what we have here. This is the contrabassoon legato patch, also with the medium mix, and it's playing this. And once again, this should be. Ah, oh, that's interesting. It's in the same... I played the same line as with the long um, the long patch of the bassoon, just to, to give it a little bit support, let's say it like this. Okay, so that's both of them together. And last but not least, the bass clarinet legato on its own and now all together the woodwinds on its own sound like this together with the strings, with the appassionata strings. I will turn off and on the woodwinds that you can hear only the strings that we had it before. Now I put in the symphonic strings again. So this is a huge difference in my opinion. When we only had the strings, um, it didn't sound like there was so much missing, but now that we have it, let's try it the other way around. I play it and I turn it off the woodwinds. It's just like the body of the whole orchestral piece. I really, really love the symphonic woodwinds from Spitfire. They, like I told you before, they match perfectly and sit so well in this orchestra together with the symphonic strings and with appassionata. 
It's really, really beautiful. Okay, so let's keep going and continue with the brass. We will do it the same way. Always use your strings as the bass and the basses, I think that's how you call it, and go from the strings um, to see if the other instruments match and in the end you can adjust the volume and blend them uh, perfectly together. So what about the brass? Um, let's start from the bottom again this time. So here I started with a tuba and with the tuba I played the same as with the bass line. And for this as well, the medium stereo mix from the symphonic brass, um, you won't be shocked to see this. Um, but yes, uh, that's what I meant. They all match together very well. Um, that's what I wanted to do. Let's compare the, the octave. And if I look at the bass and the tuba and I play them both together. So this is only the double bass. So it's that brass, that brassy color that was still missing. Um, let's continue with the next one. This is the bass trombone. I was using the long articulation here as well. No. Um, legato, the long patch, and the long patch on its own sounded like this. So you can hear the color that this brass already gives to the whole composition. Let's try to only add these two to the string arrangement and listen to the difference. Okay, uh, so I hope you could hear the gentle difference and now we even give one more layer on top of them with the tenor trombone. Also using the long patch from the symphonic brass and playing two notes at the same time here in the sustain mode. Again, one octave, not one octave, just a few notes over the bass trombone and over the tuba, yeah? So all of them together. Okay, together with the strings. I think you can already hear a huge difference now. Um, let's continue with the 
trumpet legato. Let's continue with the second, with the two trumpets patch. That's what I did the next. Um, I used the two trumpets legato medium mix again, the legato version, and it plays like, it sounds like this on its own. So as you can see, the two trumpets are playing the same as the second Valadin, so the main melody. And I even supported this with the solo trumpet. And I layered it on top, so they are both playing the same. Sorry, we have to switch this off and only listen to the trumpets. Okay, so you get the idea. It gives a little bit more power and a still one more shape of a different color to the to the uh, strings let's let's listen to just the trumpets and the strings So this is already almost the whole brass section. That means um, if we wouldn't play any counter melody or extra uh, notes, this would be this could easily be the whole brass section. So now let's listen to all of this together. Let's add the strings and the woodwinds again. I will add them step by step that's an, a good idea I, th I think I think that sounds pretty cool already um, and you can hear every instrument has its own job its own range um, and gives its own color to the whole composition um, what I added now was a counter melody let's call it like this some extra notes and this is the only instrument track where I did not use Spitfire. I'm sorry for that, but um, it's let uh, let me say it like this: um, the loud and um, the loud and aggressive horn articulations are really uh, difficult, at least for me to um, achieve with the Spitfire symphonic strings. They have their strength in the low brass, but sometimes it gets a little bit tricky to reach this epic massive horn sound um, when you play in the higher dynamics. And for this I used the Cinematic Studio Brass, I almost forgot it. 
uh, the Cinematic Studio Brass horns because they actually blend very well with Spitfire um, libraries and you get that massive powerful horn sound that you can hear through your composition without tweaking a lot. I know many other people may say, um, oh, there are other articulations in Spitfire. You can use the cuivre, uh, I don't know if it's called like this, uh, articulation. I'm sure you can do this, but I was looking for a fast solution in this situation. So I chose a different patch and with the cinematic studio brass horns, they are sound alone like this. So together with the whole arrangement, or let's just play it with the brass at first. So as you can already hear, you can hear these horns through your brass and also through the composition. And I layered this, almost layered this, let's, let's see, with the solo trumpet from Spitfire. Let me see what this is playing. So they are not exactly playing the same melody, but they are playing um, the only parts of that counter melody that you can hear. And if we listen to the whole brass now, brass and woodwinds. So what I told you before, I want to say it one more time because this is really important and I heard this a lot of times from other composers already, listen to this arrangement on its own and if the brass sounds good on its own, that's great. And if the woodwinds sound good on its own, that's great. And then you can mix them together. And the brass on its own already sounds pretty good in my opinion. Okay, one more time the woodwinds on its own. Great. And now one more time the whole thing starting with the appassionata strings symphonic strings woodwinds
And if we take a look at how they sit all together, you can already see they are covering pretty much the same ground. Oops. And the strings. So just add and adjust step by step the instruments uh, the way that I showed you right now. And of course, in this composition, the volume is already um, adjusted. Um, at some parts, the brass may sound a little loud, but together with the percussion, I think it's fine and uh, it matches my personal taste. Um, okay, let's continue with the percussion. For the percussion, I chose the Joby Burgess uh, percussion. I hope I pronounced him well. Um, it's the Spitfire audio percussion and it's also recorded in Air Lindhurst Hall. That means it matches great because of the same recording room, like I said uh, already. Um, my main timpani, uh, my main timpani uh, was this, yes, that's right. But my main beat of that percussion in this track is the tune timpani. And I will just, we will just give it a listen on its own. Okay, so the great thing is I used the tuned timpani patch so that we can use the notes from our orchestral arrangement. And I added the close mic here because the default setting is only the tree, but in the whole context, the tree was not cutting through enough, if you know what I mean. With the close mic, it yeah it cuts through a little bit better. Um, that's why I chose this mix setting here, and together with the track and only the timpani, it sounds like this. Okay, um, the next that I used is the timpani roll, also from the same uh, developer, of course, the same library. Um, I used keys, which is here, I think, let's see. Yes, this it was the key switch for the the normal role and this is the muted role let's it's the normal role and the muted role slightly different sound but um, i liked it here more um, the muted and here the usual role as you can see i also added a little bit of close microphone here, just a little bit. And together with the timpani on its own, it sounds like this. listen to both of them, just the timpanis. Okay, so it's not that extreme, but you can definitely hear the effect and it does what it should do. Um, I also added a timpani swell. It's the same patch, only the swell key articulation with the same close mix setting, 
Let's listen to this on its own. It sounds slightly different. Okay, it's a really nice sound and both, all of them together is like So this was as well. Okay. So what else? Yes, now we come into the... Okay, uh, um, here the last one is the same swell. I copied it there at the end. So it's nothing as special. I added two instances of the Piatti crashes, that's how I call them, and they make this sound. And as you can see, I only used the tree microphone here. Um, I left it like this. And I added another instance of the same patch. I copied it. Also only the tree microphone and it plays slightly different things. Yeah, it's a little bit different and I wanted it to have uh, in another volume so it didn't match if I put it, if I tried it in one instrument track. So I, I split it them and I made a second track that I don't run into any problems. Yeah, uh, all together what we have now sounds like this. Of course you could do much much more but I personally felt like the focus on this was the arrangement and I only wanted to have some little orchestral percussion to support it yeah let's say it like this and I added here a cymbal roll I think it's a roll also the tree mic only and it sounds like this. It's only a short. But just listen here together with this. Ah, it's always so bad to see it in the screen. So where did I put it? here. Ah, it's this. Okay, let's hear if you can um, hear it in the hole. It's just that little a little bit to the Piatti crash before the Piatti crash and here I also have the symbol low patch. This was the medium patch and I'm also playing a brush, but a longer, this is a longer um, roll. A little longer, not, not a lot. But you can also hear it here in the hole. Ah, come on. How can you handle this? <laughs> so you can hear um, like a, yeah, a simple roll brush coming slowly 
um, until the final Piatti crash comes in. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all for the percussion. Um, I have to admit one more thing because of the screen. I usually uh, work in a much higher resolution, but if I record the videos there, it's difficult on YouTube to see them if someone is looking from a smaller monitor. So I always reduce it for the YouTube videos. And the result is something like you see here, uh, where can we find the, the tracks? I cannot see anything. So um, just to, to explain this a little bit. But yeah, that's all that we did for this track. Let me add all the different things, including the percussion now one more time. Okay, so that's pretty much it. In the first video I already showed you um, the reverb that I used and yeah, of course, uh, an EQ on every single instrument. I think uh, everyone out there knows that, but now I will give you some really cool plugins that I used here for this piece on the master bus and this is the the ice on the cake <laughs> I can promise this <laughs> um, the first thing let's start again <laughs> from the bottom um, here I think you know this plugin. This is tonal balance control. I use it if I chose the orchestral setting to see if my track matches in the right um, areas for the different frequency areas. And if we listen to the piece and have a look. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. Um, you don't have to always be in the middle, just it gives you um, a feeling if you are if something is completely wrong and your, your high mids are much too loud or something like that. But I use this as my personal tool. Of course, use your ears. Everyone says use your ears. But this is some confirmation if your ears say it sounds great and the tonal balance control also says it sounds great then it is great most of the time but i can switch this off now because i showed you already and it doesn't affect the sound in any way so what i used on my master bus is a little bit of compression here um, the solid state, it's a waves compressor, I think, yes. Um, let's just put it on and off. Only a little bit of compression. So you can hear um, this gives a little bit, it makes it a little louder, 
not only louder, but um, I think it, it has a great effect on the sound and it did it does not compress the signal too much and you have seen maximum one or two dB maximum. My magical plug-in, the Clarifonic from Kush Audio, just have a listen without and then I put it on. Slightly, but it is a difference. It feels like it clears these muddy parts and makes everything stand out a little bit clearer. Of course, you can uh, use completely crazy settings, but I only used it a little bit. And this is a fantastic plugin as well. It's from Oak Sound Sooth 2. There's a preset that's called Contain the Low Mid Orchestra. And with it, let's bypass it. Also clears up everything a little bit and takes out those muddy areas here in this area a little bit. I think I, I've seen uh, like two or three hours of videos only explaining this plugin, but it is fantastic. And if you spend your time understanding this, you can do a lot of good stuff from every mix, uh, even if you're not a orchestral music composer it's it's really worth it the next plugin that i used is the oxford inflator um, i do not have this plugin for a long time already but it is pretty cool what it does it inflates your sound <laughs> let me say it like this i will switch it off start um, without the plugin and then turn it on I think you can definitely hear the difference uh, what this does and last but not least an instance of ozone um, it's so big okay um, not much going on here from ozone only a little uh, boost on the high frequencies again for the whole composition if I turn it off and on Also using the imager and the imager just widens the whole um, spectrum a little bit more let's listen without the imager And of course, last but not least, a limiter. I'm using the FabFilter Pro L2 and it's just for avoiding any peaks if you um, 
export an audio mix down and uh, yeah to make it a little bit louder of course um, I, I raised the volume 3.5 at this uh, track As you can see I took it to the maximum level only for you out there to have the maximum sound <laughs> that you can get here from this YouTube video. That's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed these two videos, these two parts. I had a lot of fun. It took some time but like I said before um, it's a lot of fun for me, but I would really appreciate if you leave your honest uh, thoughts about this stream, these videos. And if you have any question, don't hesitate to write down. Um, if you have any ideas for further videos, let me know. Um, I'm interested to hear all your thoughts and of course I'm looking forward to any new follower that um, likes my content. Um, so please um, don't hesitate to subscribe and yeah, I want to thank you now and I think for this stream all is said and done i will play the whole thing hopefully without any clips one more time and then we will see you on the next time thank you and bye bye